single wheel procedure braided hair modeling through reunit identification. And digitalization to create human avatars play an important role in the fields of computer gaming, animated movies, and the virtual world. Um, both manual modeling and automatic capturing of higher styles are challenging because of the complex styling. Uh, modeling different uh, braid patterns with a complicated uh, occlusion among braids is a challenging task. Single wheel methods has not yet addressed the capture of braids. So in this paper, uh, we mainly focus on generating the 3D braided hair model from single input uh, image. A multi-view hair modeling system usually reconstructs 3D hair models by first capturing real-life hair images, videos, 3D hair data, then they calculating the 3D or 2D orientation fields, and finally generating hair strands following the 2D or 3D orientation fields. However, uh, the capture system often requires multiple cameras and a very uh, complex setup, as you can see in the images. Uh, on the contrary, uh, the capture system of single wheel reconstruction are uh, simple, usually only require one camera. There are mainly two ways to perform a single wheel hair modeling. The first one is by retrieving candidate hair models from a 3D hair model dataset based on the extracted features, such as uh, semantic segmentations, 2D or 3D orientation maps. Then refine the uh, candidate hair model by generating uh, the final 3D uh, hair model. The second way is by using deep neural networks. However, those methods require a large 3D hair data set. Existing single wheel hair reconstruction methods can only be used on portrait images where the face of the person is seen since uh, these methods need the face to help recover the 3D information. The capacity of the data-driven methods depends on the size and diversity of the 3D hair data set. None of the above systems can reconstruct braided hairstyles. Conversely, um, our method can reconstruct a realistic uh, 3D hair based on single input hair image, even from the back wheel. who uh, introduced uh, data-driven methods to reconstruct braided hairstyles from input data obtained from consumer RGBD camera and a 3D um, braid patch data set. However, uh, the quality of the captured multiple hair images and the 3D point clouds have a great impact on the effectiveness of the method, as well as the quality of the reconstruction results. In addition, the scale of the example patches in a data set also affects the accuracy of the reconstruction and the computation time for um, patch matching. Um, now I, I will talk about our approach. So uh, our braided hair modeling system only requires a single input image. Moreover, the braided structure information is directly obtained from the image. The system can recover the braid structures without any predefined 3D braid patches or models. So the reconstruction results will not be affected by the scale, variety, and quality of the 3D braid samples. Here shows the overview of our system. And the input of our system is a single hair image. There is no constraints on the view of the input image. We first segment the braid region, then we apply our braid unit segmentation method to extract the braid unit's information and divide the hair region into braid region and non-braid region. In the braid region, we recover the 2D braid structure information. In the non-braid region, we extract the 2D hair strands. Then we generated a 3D hair volume based on the silhouette of the hair region. Finally, we project 2D braids and 2D hair strands on the 3D hair volume to obtain a 3D braided hairstyle model. Uh, 
Um, although a braid is composed of several hair strands, those hair strands are only partially visible in braid images. This is because the braid hair strands overlap on each other. So the appearance of the braid is made of a group of braid units. Variance in the arrangement, size, shape, orientation, and locations of the braid units lead to different braid hairstyles. As the basic element of the braid hairstyle, the braid unit provides inf important information about the braid structure. So our braid reconstruction is based on the braid unit identification. Uh, since there is no braid unit data set available, we create our own braid unit data set. We download uh, 225 braid hairstyle images from the internet. And those braid hairstyle images contain different hair color, braid length, strand amount, and arrangement. So we manually annotate the braid uh, units using a set of polygon points. So you can see in the uh, images, the yellow um, polygon um, shows the braid unit. Um, here is the overview of the braid unit segmentation system. We treat each braid unit as an instance. Then we apply the instance segmentation methods to segment the braid units from the 2D hair images. We apply the mask RCNN to segment the braid units. Uh, after the braid units uh, segmentation, we fit an ellipse to every braid unit contour. The center point of the ellipse uh, indicates the location of the braid unit. We use the major and minor X to represent the orientation of the braid unit. Due to the complex, uh, complexity of the braid structure, there are still a few braid units that cannot be detected. So we developed an algorithm to recover the missing braid units. After recovering all the missing braid units, we estimate the braid region center curve by quadratic uh, regression based on the center points of all the braid units. So you can see here, this is the uh, uh, braid region center curve and the, the uh, lower image shows the braid unit with location, orientation, and size information. Um, here, uh, I would talk about the uh, 2D hair strand extraction. So a uh, human head typically consists of a large volume of hair strands, and each hair strand has an extremely small diameter making it very difficult to, to abstract each single hair strands from hair images. So in, in a procedural modeling manner, it is better to uh, extract a group of K hair strands first, then generate a similar neighbor, uh, neighboring uh, strands to obtain a complete hair strands. Previous research showed that a uh, Gobble filter is well suited to uh, estimate the local orientation of the hair strands. So we first filled the non-braid hair region with a bank of couple filters. Then we apply an image enhancement method on the maximum couple filter response image to obtain the enhanced hair strand information. After that, we apply a line tracking technique to obtain the hair strand segments. However, uh, some of the extracted hair segments are very short. So we apply a grow and connect technique to obtain longer hair strands. Uh, finally, we use a supply with 20 control points to uh, represent each hair strand segment. Uh, now I will talk about the uh, 3D hair and the braid generation. So uh, recovering a 3D volume from single image is an ill-posed problem. It is ex uh, especially difficult um, in our case, since the braid is usually at the back of the head. To overcome this difficulty, uh, we design a new approach utilizing the silhouette of the hair region to create a 3D hair volume. Based on the hair region silhouette, we select equal numbers of points from the left and right side correspondingly. Then we uh, inter interpolate 40 points between each pair of adjacent points among the same side. We also fit a straight line based on the first three pairs of points from the both side as the center line of the hair region. Then we set image on the XY plane. We select the rotation X uh, based on the center line. Then the left silhouette and the right silhouette are rotated around the rotation X uh, towards each other 
um, bad interval of 0 0.01 radians. Then we perform weighted linear interpolation between the corresponding left curves and right curves to generate the final 3D curves. All those points on the 3D curves compose the 3D hair volume. Then we project uh, 3D hair volume back to the X1 plane. Um, for each 2D hair uh, data points, P in the hair image, we find the three nearest projected points and calculate the uh, Z coordinates of the P by linear interpolation of the Z coordinates of those uh, 3D points in the 3D hair volume. Uh, now we will discuss uh, how the dense hair strands are generated. The projected 3D hair strands are interactively uh, aligned with the scalp mesh. And the paths of the braid uh, helical curves are created such uh, that they follow the calculated 3D center curves of the identified braid. You can see in this uh, video. Uh, we now want to grow uh, dense hair strands from the hair root region of the avatar's head. Our calculated sparse uh, hair strands will act as guide for this uh, process. For each guide curve, we identify the corresponding hair root triangle, which will act as amateur. We select the triangle closest to the starting end of the curve. The particle system emits dense hair strands from the triangle and trace their paths by following the guide curve. Uh, we now want to grow dense hair from the hair root uh, region of the avatar's head. Uh, our calculated uh, sparse hair strands will act as guide for this procedure. And here we see that this hair strands resulting from all of the guide curves. Uh, for visualization purpose, we use a random color to show the dense strands from, uh, from each individual guide hair. Now let us discuss how the hair color uh, from the image space is transferred to the hair strands. We create a correspondence between the hair region of the image and the hair root mesh. To do so, uh, we use uh, the user set sparse correspondence between the image and the hair root mesh. We associate the uh, surface mesh with image and uh, wrap it to line up the markers. And uh, we do so by using the markers as uh, constraints for a Laplacian deformation. The hair root mesh is then texture mapped based on this correspondence. Each dense hair strands get its color from the hair root mesh through uh, this texture mapping. Um, you can see the final color uh, on this slide. Here uh, we show the reconstruction results of the braid hairstyles. The input braid hair image are different in hair strand lengths, hair color, braid styles, and number of braids. Our results showcase uh, how the procedural modeling is faithful to the shape of the hair style and the braids. Uh, in this figure, the first image in each section is the input image. The second image shows the guide uh, hair curves. And the last image shows the procedural modeling and rendering. Take the uh, left top input image, for example. We extract 138 guide curves and generate 124,000 dense hair strands, as well as 12,000 braid strands. Um, to sum up, uh, we present a system that can reconstruct procedural 
3D braid hair from single wheel hair images. Unlike the existing single hair reconstruction system, our method starts from uh, hairstyle recognition, partitioning hair regions of different hairstyles, then take the braid region and other hairstyle regions into separate modeling procedures. The segmentation and analysis of the braid units allow the recovery of missing braid units as well as the um, parametric modeling for 3D braid. We have tested with several images and even though it has a few shortcomings and a few manual intervention, it shows that uh, procedural modeling of braids provides a good uh, approximation of existing hair while still have the capacity of easy mo uh, modification thanks to the procedural model. Um, our approach has some uh, limitations. Currently, our braided hair uh, reconstruction generates uh, only three strand braids. And this could be improved by adding a braid style recognition method to perform N strands braid reconstruction. Also, uh, the presence of accessory like the hair clips and the bands uh, leads to uh, discontinuities in the braid region. Finally, since the 3D hair volume is based on the silhouette, the 3D shape of the hair is not always faithful to what would uh, be expected. Um, and I want to talk about the feature work. Uh, so our approach opens uh, interesting feature work avenues. First, we could apply a more accurate hair region segmentation methods. Second, uh, we could make the hair color to be consistent with input image and improve hair uh, relining with color extraction. And finally, um, we could improve our work by reconstructing hair even for the regions that are not visible in the image. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks for watching. Okay, thank you very much, Chao, and yeah, for your very you. interesting presentations. Any questions from the audience? Anybody? Okay, Chao, uh, let me yeah. ask a question. You know, I mean, first of all, I mean, it's a very interesting word. Uh, my first question is regarding the you know segmentation of the you know the hair, the, the braids. You know, when you have an input image, I think in your slide you mentioned about the network. So what do you mean that? What do you mean network? You mean like kind of deep neural network for segmentation? Uh, yes, it's a uh, we apply the mask or thin. Yeah, it's the uh, yeah it's not a typical segmentation network. So what what that network did you use? Uh, the mask or thin. I sorry, I uh, sorry, uh, I the the mask mask or thin. Oh, mask or thin. Oh, okay, uh, so okay, yeah. So, oh, mask mask. Okay, I got it. So, so, but that's not the core part of your algorithm. That's why you didn't present the structure, right? And you yeah, didn't yeah. Work at all. Okay, cool. Um, do we have other questions from audience? <laughs> so it's quiet. Okay, let me ask a lot of questions. Yeah, if we don't have questions from okay. other audience. Uh, so, Chao, um, I think for your result, did you compare that with you know other method, for example, especially those like uh, you know the neural network based you know approach? Did you compare the result you know um, of yours with them? Uh, actually, there's like only one paper I mentioned in the related work. Yeah, they, they do the braid, yeah, braid reconstruction. Uh, so if we because we are only focused on the braid reconstruction. So uh, it's very hard for us to compare with the uh, other work, yeah. So uh, you talk about like you have acquired 225 images, right? Yeah, and yes. Images. And how, you, you use this image for what? It's not for training or training the network, it's a training the network for segmentation or? Uh, training the, uh, you say for training the network for the grid unit segmentation. So you can oh, see here, I like yeah. uh, manually annotate the uh, braid units and generate lots of braid unit patch. Then do the like uh, Mars Garcia instant instant segmentation to check the uh, if there's uh, like multiple braid units in the image. Yeah. 
Okay, so this manual annotation process process could be very time consuming, isn't it? Yes, it is. And now you want to have 200 somehow, the image, you have 2000, that would take a lot of time. Did you ever think of like automate this process? Or? Um, yeah, <laughs> no th th yeah, that's a really good idea, yeah. But at the very beginning, because there's no like, data set available, so I just like manually do the other work. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people when talk about a new network, they talk about, you know, their automatic, you know, I mean, annotation, you know, especially for the chain examples, like for your case, you know, especially for the breed. Okay, cool. Oh, very good. Um, if we don't have other questions, and I'm going to move on to the next presenter. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you.